thank you very much. Um, thank you, Google. Thank you, everyone, for, for attending this, this presentation. Um, so today we are going to, to, to present, to show this uh, new website that we are launching, that we launched recently. So as, as, as Gov already said, my name is Wilma Sanchez. My colleague is Vaya Shatter. Uh, from the emergency health team at the IFRC, and uh, yeah, we are going to show this website developed by the by the IFRC. This this website, or the idea of developing this website, was mainly to try try in recognition of the of the role of communities and individuals uh, in better preparing for for epidemic and and pandemics, and mainly after a very recent experience uh, we've had with, with COVID-19. So the agenda for today, first, we are going to, to do uh, a short warm-up. So we are going to test a little bit uh, the knowledge of all the people uh, connected on, on, on epidemic response. Then we are going to get uh, to provide an overview of what is the IFRC so we can understand what is, um, what is that what is our purpose. Then we are going to explain, we are going to get into the, the website, we are going to explain what we aim, what we want to achieve with this with this website and then to, to look at some functionalities of this of these two afterwards. Uh, we are going to do uh, some remarks and finally we are going to have a, a QA uh, a quest, a questions and answers uh, we are not going to show the website in detail, but we encourage you to 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 to, to have a look and, and and to explore the site uh, when, when when you have time after after this presentation. So now it's time to, to do as as I said to, to test your knowledge a little bit and to do this quiz. Uh, so we are going to jump now to the to the quiz. So this is a QR code for you to scan and to have access to the to the to the quiz to the questions. Um, I'm going to give you a few seconds for you to for you to scan it. We can see the number of people getting on. It's uh, 16, 17, it's moving fast. Yeah. It's growing. We have in total 63 people connected. Uh, so we would like to have more people so far. We have 21 uh, in, the, in the quiz site. Yeah, we have already almost thirty, almost half of the participants. So I guess we can we can just jump to the next question. And as people get con get connected, uh, they can just uh, keep keep answering, and, uh, keep taking the quiz. So the first question is: risk of getting a disease during a specific time period, such as during an outbreak. We call that. An incident incidence rate, an attack rate, uh, latency period, or incubation period. So please, please respond in, in answering in your devices, and afterwards we are going to to see how how did it go. We have ten answers so far. Ten out of thirty seven. It's anonymous. <laughs> it's anonymous. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Just I forgot to, to remind you. It's anonymous. I guess at the beginning they they ask you to put your name, but the answers uh, it's it's anonymous. We are not going to show any any, and we don't know. We don't have actually access to to see who who answered what. So feel free, feel free to to answer. Moving up. I wonder what people are voting. 
We shouldn't give them enough time to Google the answer. <laughs> okay, now we are going to, to, to close this question and we are going to see the answers. So let's see how people have voted. So people, 61, majority of the people voted for incidents rate and in second place is attack rate. It's, kind of, it's a little bit distributed, the other the options. Let's see what is actually the right, the right answer. The right answer for this one, so that 19% was, was right. The right answer for this one, it's, it's attack rate. That's what we call the risk of getting a disease during a specific time period. And it's very used, as, as we said, during, during outbreak. We're going to jump to the next question. This technique supports preparedness action uh, and that it's born to identify and locate concentrations of people, landmarks, vulnerable groups, and health hazards. So that we call that community engagement, community mapping, social mobilization, or community-based surveillance. So both. We have 46 people now connected on WhoopLab. Any improvements on sounds is most appreciated, Maya and uh, okay. yeah, Maya, maybe a microphone or something. Thank you. All right, we have 35 votes, 36. Let's close that now. And show how people have voted. Ha ha. And a little bit more than half of the voters said community mapping, 53%. And then in second place, community-based surveillance. Let's see, let's see the right answer. So the majority was right. Uh, in this case, we are talking about community mapping. So congratulations for that, those 19 people who answer right. Can we go to this? Yes. Yeah. Who, can, who can declare a disease outbreak? One, hospitals, two, non-governmental organizations, three, governments, four, Red Cross, Red Cross and national societies. That one is quite, it, it's quite easy. We think it's easy. We think it's easy. <laughs> Maya, your sound is good. Weimar, your sound is not so good. Thanks for the feedback on the sound. Yes. We have 32 people, 33 already. I guess we can just move. Yeah, now let's see who said what. Oh, whoa. Okay. <laughs> okay. That was, that was Zinzi. Yeah. 100%, 35 people said governments, and that is, that is the actual right answer. Only governments can declare an outbreak or, or an epidemic. Let's move to the next question. Now, which hemorrhagic fever am I? My reservoir are rats, which do not become ill with the virus, but shed the virus in their urine and feces. So the first option is yellow fever, second, Ebola virus disease, Three, Lassa fever, and four, Marburg virus disease. Go ahead, you can vote now. It's going up. Already have 16, 17. The good thing is there's only one option. <laughs> Let's give a few 
few more seconds. Try to get 30. Yes. Yes, sir. Let's close it now and let's see how did you vote. So majority said lots of fever and in a in a second place Ebola virus disease. So let's see the the right answer. So yeah, majority was right. This this presentation corresponds more to to Lassa fever. Let's move to the next to the next question. This is a true false question. So infection rates for measles are similar for girls and boys, but mortality is higher in female children. This this is true or false? It's going up. Let's reach 30, please. Almost there. Should we close it at 28? 29? Ah, here okay. we go. Okay, the magic number. Magic number. So, 63% said this is this statement is false, and uh, 37, 11 people uh, said this statement is true. Let's see what is the right answer. And this is actually true. And this shows a little bit that there is still some level of inequality in access to, to vaccination based on based on gender. So yeah, uh, this is true. Uh, next one is. Uh, they are diseases that can be transmitted by animals, except avian influenza, anthrax, plague, or seasonal influenza. It's going up quickly. All right. Let's see. They're right. The, how did you vote? So 62% said seasonal influenza and 35% said anthrax. Let's see the right answer. It's actually seasonal seasonal influenza. It's not, it's, it's not really transmitted by, by animals. The other three can be transmitted by, by animals. Let's move to the to the next question. The final question. The following are modes of transmission for monkey bugs, which is kind of a it's a trendy it's a trendy issue right now. This monkey pox. So the following are modes of transmission of monkey pox, except one aerosols, three it's vehicle borne, uh, two direct contact, and four droplets. <laughs> Confuse everybody. <laughs> so one, three, two, four. Let's give a few more seconds and then we'll just show the answer. Shouldn't give enough time for people to start Googling, right? Yeah. Okay, let's let's see what what do you say? So fifty-four percent says vehicle born. And then 32% says, so let's see the right answer. Oops. It's actually aerosols. Uh, and this is something that is actually being, it's one of the remarks that experts are doing right now, kind of uh, moving this disease away from, from, from COVID, for example. Um, so yeah, this was the quiz. Now we are going to, after after this warming up, we are going to move um, to the to the presentation. Just a reminder: in in Wook Lab, in the same session of the of of the quiz where you are right now, 
uh, there is the, the dialogue icon, so you can click there and you can you can ask, you can post your questions there, and we are going to gather them and and use them to the you know for for the Q and A session at the end. Now, just a, a really short introduction about what is the IFRC and what 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 is what is this. So it's, uh, as as the slide says, it's it's the largest humanitarian network. So there is almost almost all the countries in the world have have are members of the of the IFRC, the International Federation of Red Cross Red Crescent Societies, uh, and uh, and we work in each country to national societies. In each country, we have one one national society. It's important also to to know that the IFRC was created in 1919, like one year after the 1918 influenza pandemic. And that was surely a factor uh, for the creation of the of the IFRC as of course it's the impact in the society back then was was huge and with around 50 million uh, people died. So yeah, uh, this is this is kind of the way we work. Our our uh, approach is in 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 several in, in several fields, um, but the the health the health component it's uh, it's it's important. And we recently have been working in several epidemics, uh, of course, COVID. Uh, most of our national societies work on COVID, uh, but also in in Ebola virus disease and uh, Zika outbreak in the Americas, the the AH1N1 in in 2009. So this epidemic component it's it's important for us as as organization. Let me tell you um, briefly about the objectives of, of this new website. Um, actually, about 10 years ago, uh, we launched um, a toolkit and a manual that we have been using with our volunteers, the ones uh, working with all the national societies that Weimar was talking about earlier. Um, and this is a resource that has been very popular and very useful. Uh, but obviously, about 10 years ago, we were thinking uh, about producing large documents that were then printed and shipped all around the world. Um, so here, the idea was to move away from this um, and to create something online that can be updated uh, much faster and, um, and that can help our volunteers prepare and respond to outbreaks. Uh, what we've also done is we've created a new section for managers as well. So it's, um, it gives more, um, more technical information for them to manage community-based epidemic preparedness and response actions. The toolkit is targeting really our own constituency, so Red Cross and Red Cross and volunteers and staff, uh, but we're presenting it to you today um because we think that some some of it can be highly relevant for a lot of people uh, but just keep in mind that this is really looking at the actions that red cross and red cross and volunteers can do at, at their level and um, yeah as i was saying so there is a specific content for community volunteers and response managers there are two um, separate sections that waymar will show you in a minute um, it's free access, so there's no login, no password. You can just um, find a site and, and play with it. It's available in four languages, which are the four languages of the IFRC, English, French, Spanish, and Arabic. Uh, for Arabic, we're still finalizing the translation of um, half of the site, but the rest is already fully available. It's compatible with tablets and cell phones, so we've avoided uh, heavy um, pictures, um, so it's quite easy to navigate. And uh, it can be used offline, which is also a for our national societies. Let's move now to the presentation of the website. Okay, so now we're moving, we are going to show you the actual website. So yeah, exactly. So, so this is the, the website. As, as, as we we have launched it uh, a, a, a few months ago. 
you can see this is this is how you can you can find it and this is the whole this is the whole structure of the of the website uh, as Roger said the content the content is is divided in two different sections sections based on based, based on the audiences so the first section is the volunteers and the second section is the it's the it's the managers let's move let's go to the to the volunteers section uh in this session uh the volunteers our red cross red cross and volunteers can, can access uh different different components different kind of tools so here at the top you can see uh volunteers can have access to information uh, by by disease or by disaster but then we also provide some volunteer actions and some community messages and then at the end there is a training manual uh, that can be downloaded and then a resource stuff uh, where volunteers can, can get uh, further information it's, in, it's important to, to understand that uh, all these tools all these components can be can be uh, downloaded in, in PDF uh, mode, so, so they can be printed out and, and sent okay. to, to the field or to, or to meetings or to sessions with the, with the communities, uh, which makes it uh, very, very interesting. Now I would like to, uh, I would like to kind of introduce a little bit of uh, some sort of the scenario. So let's yeah. think. Sorry, Weimar, again, your sound is not good. So maybe either Maya speaks or you closer to the mic. Thank you. I'm gonna get closer to the. I'm gonna get closer to the mic then. So can can you hear better now? Yep. Okay. So let let's think about, uh, for example, uh, Madagascar uh, facing a severe flood uh, situation right now, and a volunteer and a volunteer. Let's name that volunteer Anna. Uh, who is in Madagascar right now uh, wants to understand what to do, what exactly, what to do uh, to, to support and, and to, to work uh, to, uh, to to respond to, to this to this loss. So she comes to the disaster tab. And she chooses, for example, floods. Then, when 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 she comes to the to the flood section, she's going to, to have access to different files regarding regarding floods, uh, and then that relationship of the floods with epidemics in general, because that's the objective of this website. So that relation with the main health impact. So we can see here a set of health concerns like that are related to floods, like diarrheal disease, vector-borne disease. Etc. Uh, then, if we keep scrolling down, we see the different disease tools that might be that might be relevant to to this flood to this to this flood situation. So let's click on diarrheal disease, which is are pretty uh, prevalent when 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 floods are there, and then we jump to to a disease tool. Uh, which in this case it's 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 diarrheal disease. Then the information that we are going to find here is some general key facts regarding regarding the the disease and some messages and some elements, some things to do uh, in case an epidemic occurs. Uh, and if we keep scrolling down, uh, we can we can have some questions relevant in case we want to develop some sort of really basic community based assessment um, so there is there is a huge list we, we are not going to go over all, all of it but important if we keep scrolling down we are going to we are going to go we are going to find these volunteer actions it's specific actions that the volunteer can do to support the response to 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 that disease right um and here there is there is a list of actions that you that that you can find so for example assessment of the hydration 
and you will also find relevant information regarding the assessment of of the hydration in in in, in that context so this is this is roughly uh, the 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 volunteer section so we went through all, all these tabs uh that that you see here but finding the links uh and the whole process the whole thinking process to, to respond to, to to these events as i said it's important to, to know there is there is this button here i'm not going to open but if you click here you are going to, to get this information in pdf uh which is which is uh interesting now, uh, being conscious of time, I, I, I would like to move to, to the next uh, section, which is the one related to, to managers. And the one related to managers, it's more, it's, it provides a little bit more advanced information and uh, more information important for managers to make decisions and to plan activities more than just information for volunteers to 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 develop within within the communities so in the in the manager section we we find the same diseases and disaster uh, sections but with some kind of uh, not different but with some extra information uh, more complex let's say and, and a little bit more advanced so so we can so managers have elements enough to to make decisions so here for example remember the question about that rate so here uh, we we find the definition and we have lots of definitions and some proposed uh interventions that the managers can plan to respond uh we also provide indicators and, and targets, which is important to ensure quality uh, during, during the implementation of activities, and then some other information like the relationship with, with, other, with other sectors. So this is, this is uh, for, for the business tool, but it's, it works kind of similar uh, for, for the flux. There is another interesting uh, tab, which is the key concepts, which provides, it's very handy because it provides uh, information and uh, yeah, definitions of, of, of different, of different uh, things that we might need during responding to, to epidemic. Again, um, Let's let's go to attack rate. This is the definition of attack rate. The attack rate that we saw before was for for respiratory infections. Uh, so that attack rate was specific. In this case, it's the, the generic definition of attack rate. And then we are going to find several different concepts uh, related related to epidemic. Again, you can just you can just explore a, a little bit a little bit more. Um, afterwards being being conscious of of time uh so we are going to move to the, to the presentation again uh just uh, some final some final comments it's <laughs> excuse me it's important to understand that this is not an overall this is not an encyclopedia of of epidemics this is focused on community-based action planned by the Red Cross, Red Crescent volunteers and managers. So this is not intended to cover all the different sectors and everything related to, to epidemic, like uh, let's say lab capacity or clinical care. That's not the purpose of this. This, is, this approach is more community-based and a little bit more specific to to the kind of activities that we do as organization as a, as a red cross red crescent but we still think it's important for for, for people for communities to, to to know it because uh it is uh it's a very good uh 
uh, full. Uh, the content it's available in different in different languages. Um, so far, we have it in English, French, and Spanish. The whole the whole website. Um, but the idea is to also include uh, Arabic. So far, we have the volunteers section in Arabic, and the manager section is in, in, in translation. Uh, so we expect to have the Arabic, the whole Arabic site in, in, in September. So I guess that, that, that's it on, on, on our side.